The Like a Dragon Gaiden Street Fight. Oh, my God. <laughs> Hobbs and Takeshita and Kyle Fletcher and Brian Cage versus Chris Jericho, Kenny Omega, Paul White, and Kota Ibushi. So we talked about this going in. What the hell is Paul White going to do? And the answer is not zero, but it's very little. He comes out and stands And then here. the one thing he did do was almost get killed. Yes. Hey, listen. I don't want to take anything away from anybody in this match. They all worked their asses off. In fact, they all worked way harder than they should have. Yes. For the sake of their health. But this is another one. You got to just say no to people sometimes. What in the fuck is Paul White doing taking a body slam off a platform under the hood of a car? This guy can barely walk. And that bump looked like it just killed this guy. Like, Powerhouse Hobbs is a really strong dude. But when you're trying to lift a really heavy guy, you need to be able to move your feet. You know, maybe you lift him and, and his weight's a little bit, so you kind of got to move your foot or maybe whatever. He's standing on a platform. He can't move his feet at all. So he barely gets him up. Like, this is true powerhouse shit. This was powerhouse shit. He powered this guy up, and, you know, he's not all the way upside down. He got him as high as he could, and then he just has to throw him. And he lands half on the glass, half on the the hood, half on the fucking whatever. Lands, like, just, he may as well have fallen off a building. And then slides down the car and lands on the ground. We never see the guy again. Yeah. I'm like, oh, my God. And then we had the bottle, and then Kenny got cut open by the bottle. And then we had uh, Ibushi, who's already had one neck surgery. He gets clotheslined off a bike, and he lands on his neck. I thought he was dead. And then we have Takesha hitting people with a fucking bike. He hit him with a bicycle. There's pedals. There's chains. There's shit everywhere. I was like, someone is going to die in this match. In a video game match. A video game match. Don't die in any match, but please don't die in a video game match. I was scared shitless the whole time I watched this match. It was batshit crazy is the proper term for this match. So like the show opened with the chokes them off the stage, or the match opened with the chokes them off the stage, and and uh, White grabs Fletcher and does that, and then he just grabs Hobbs, they go backstage, and eventually they do the car spot, and all those things he said about the car spot are true. But if you're going to do it, may as well get it over. And as everyone is hollering and screaming, now, now actually, before I get to this, the biggest problem with this match, besides the carnage and violence and all that, is that uh, it, the, the camera was cutting so frequently to so many different things, you often had zero idea what was going okay, on. Okay, that I also did not mention. It was when Jericho was brawling in the uh, concession area with Takeshita. Okay? So... Like, they're brawling in concessions, but these other guys are doing the craziest shit imaginable in the middle of the ring, okay? So, whoever the director was, this guy will cut to Jericho and Takeshita, and it'll be like, I swear to God, one second. Yeah. And all of a sudden, he's like, oh shit, and he goes back to the ring again. Yeah. And then... You know, okay, everything calmed down a little bit. I'm going to go back to Jericho and Takeshita. You hit the button. It goes on there for one second. And all of a sudden, ho, ha! Ah! And he pushes a button to go back to the ring. And it was like a strobe effect. It was like every now and then, it was like a subliminal message. Every now and then, you'd all of a sudden see, oh, it's Chris Jericho, he's gone. Yes. Oh, there's Takeshita, he's gone. And I'm like, what the fuck's going on in concessions? I have no fucking idea. There was a point. You could have had a split screen, yeah. something. Yeah, there's a there, there's hundred things you could have done better than what they did. Uh, you mentioned the bottle. There was a point where I could hear a bottle break, but they kept going back and forth from the concessions to the ring so quickly, I honestly had no idea where it was. I didn't know who had the bottle or who was hitting with anyone with it or what was going on. Now, one of the cuts they did, uh, they're like, White and Hobbs are on the platform over the car. I don't know how the hell they got up there, because having watched Paul White the past couple weeks, I can't imagine him climbing anything. He's not capable of that, but they get up there. And it looked like Paul had the advantage. I don't know if he had him goozled, but he definitely had grabbed the man. And we cut to the ring or concessions or whatever. And when we cut back to the car, it's like mid-slam. Show's practically in midair. And I call him Show uh, because 
all everyone is screaming, including Don Callis and commentary. And there's just random screams and guttural noises. But if you listen closely, Taz is screaming, he's got show. Because Taz mentioned he's known this guy for 20 years. He's worked with him, and he's known him as the big show. So in the heat of the moment, concerned for his welfare, he called him by the name he knew, not Paul White. And he's slammed on the hood of a car and slides down, and he was, in fact, never seen again. And uh, I'm not sure he'll ever be seen again. I wouldn't. <laughs> that like no fun. I like no fun. Now, I don't think it's the craziest thing we saw in the match. Because... Uh, was that before or after? Okay, yes, this is after uh, Ibushi had found a bicycle and a lead pipe. He decides, what I'm going to do is ride this bike down the ramp. And as I'm riding it, I'll smack people with a pipe. This guy is an outstanding athlete. Vinny, do you know what this was? I, I, not specifically. This was Kill That Mole. When I got on the bicycle, and I don't know why we thought this was funny, but I pedaled really, really, yes. really slow yes. in a silent film that is sped up. And it was so fucking hard to not fall over pedaling because I had to pedal slow at speed. Right. So I had to pedal even slower. That is what Ibushi was doing down this ramp. This guy, like, was riding the brakes. He was going so slow down this ramp that I can't believe that he stayed upright. And on the way down, he has to hit people with a pipe. Yeah, he looked like he had never ridden a bike before in his life. Was it, was it uh, Bob Holly and Mick Foley that hit each other with popcorn in front of Dave in like 1998 at Al's show? Uh, Mick, Mick and Owen Hart. Owen Hart, is that who it was? I think so. Yeah. Yeah. Th- th- those guys would be like disgusted with this spot. <laughs> this was too fake. He's, yes. He, he was very unconvincing as he timidly rode this bike down the ramp and very carefully, gently tapped guys. And everyone had to take giant bike. bumps. Yes. And then he turns the corner and uh, was it Cage or Hobbs? It had Cage because Hobbs was with, was with White. Brian Cage absolutely destroys him with a clothesline off this bike. He just fucking Larry to this guy and Ibushi goes upside down and lands on his fucking head and neck on the floor and he's dead. I was sure he was done. Now, God. that's not as insane as what happened after the break when they're in the ring. And you mentioned this is a shoot bicycle. Yeah. It's got pedals. Yeah. It's got pipes. It's got seats, handlebars, wheels, spokes, the whole nine yards. And they lay in the ring. And Takeshita grabs Ibushi and gives him a brain buster onto it. Onto a bike. What? Yeah. There's. Let's do a brain buster on a bike. You could... Take this bump a hundred different times. I don't recommend you do. One time is one too many. But if you took this bump a hundred different times, you could hurt yourself a hundred different ways. Oh, yeah. And the funniest thing is, we cut from that where Jericho is, uh, is somewhere in here. Uh, there was a DDT onto a couch. The actual flat cushion part you sit on. Contrast that with a brain buster onto a bicycle. Yes. So there's all sorts of insanity going on. It's often what's well, entirely chaotic. Often well, after the brain buster, he starts picking up the, the bicycle and swinging it, folks. That happened, too. He yeah. threw the bicycle yes. at Kenny Omega. So At his head. So uh, Ibushi and uh, Omega worked together. They were going wild until Hobbs finally returns to the ring. Because after slamming show, uh, I'll call him show again. Just after slamming him in the car, he took a long break. He was gone for like 15 minutes. But he comes back out, destroys the Golden Lovers by himself. He... Hits a spine buster on Ibushi. His finish. And at the same time, Cage very randomly super superplexes Omega off the top row through two, two, through two tables. Then we go to commercial. That was strange, strange timing. And the second break of the, of the match. So there's a tombstone through a sign on top of chairs. It looks like I put Takeshi in a wheelchair in about five different ways. And they're working over Hobbs. He's hit the ju- takes the Judas effect, takes the V-trigger, won't go down. They duct tape him to the ropes. It's not that hard. Well, let's make clear. I think it was uh, Callus couldn't do this to Omega a few weeks back. Duct tape works great. So he's he's finally taken out of things. And well, he starts screaming at them to just do something. So Jericho gets a piece of duct tape and taped his mouth shut. That's right. That's I right. laughed at that one. Yes, that was a good one. And K tries to whip their ass, but he's outnumbered. And they hit him with Floyd. Hit him with a V trigger. Hit him for the one winged angel. And they get the pin. And they get the win. And their music's playing. The place is going crazy. 
and they there's Omega and Ibushi and Jericho, and they raise each other's hands, and nobody cares that Paul White has died. <laughs> well, they don't gone. know he's dead. They're in the ring. They don't know where the guy went. Well, they maybe. think he's out doing commentary somewhere. I guess so. Hey, listen. All, it wasn't boring. <laughs> no, it was not. I have humongous respect for everybody in this match, okay? And listen, I know that a lot of times, you know, people get hurt in wrestling with just dumb shit. You take a step. You uh, jump. You just some fluke. This fluke here. This Like Danielson bonked his head. Him and Andrade bonked heads. That's how he broke his orbital bone. Like, accidents happen all the time, okay? But that doesn't mean that we can't, like, you know what I'm saying? Tony did that that speech on Saturday. He's like, man, it just too too bad so many people were injured at, uh, at All Out, or whatever he said. And it's like, watch this match again, brother. Like, I understand, yeah, maybe nobody got hurt in this match, but, like, you know... I don't know. I don't want to bring up real bad things, but I'll just say that really, really bad things have happened, and it wasn't on the worst thing that a person ever took. In fact, a lot of times, really, really bad things happen, and it was far from the worst thing they ever took. But the reason it was so bad was because of all the other horrible fucking things they took during their career. It happened many, many times in this business. So we got to protect people. You can still have a great, great match and protect people. Because if you watch this match, not everybody in this match was batshit crazy. There were like a few people that were batshit crazy. And the rest of them had a perfectly great match without doing something batshit crazy. So anyway, can we just all survive? That's all I'm saying. Hey guys, did you love this clip? If so, you should join our channel. Just hit the join button and you'll have full access to every single show that we do. Wrestling Observer Live, Wrestling Observer Radio, The Brian and Vinny Show. All of them in full HD, full length, plus archives of all of your favorite shows. Click join today and don't miss out.